Thank you for joining us today for TechEd India Live, presented by Telerik. And today's session is a lap around Telerik, an overview of the Telerik toolbox. And we'll be taking a lot of time today to look at what it is that Telerik provides to help make developers more productive when working with Microsoft technologies, as well as looking at what Telerik provides to help you build modern mobile experiences in many different ways. And we'll dive all into that in today's session. So thank you for joining us today in this live session. I'm excited to be with you guys here in Tech at India 2012. Uh, if you've not connected with Telerik online, I would encourage you to do that. You can do that on Facebook at facebook.com slash Telerik and on Twitter as well, at Telerik. We'd love to connect with you there where we're always sharing the latest and greatest information around what's new at Telerik. My name is Todd Englund and I'm Vice President for HTML5 Web and Mobile Tools at Telerik and hopefully I've seen some of you before on other webcasts and other things that Telerik has done online. I'm also a Microsoft MVP, an ASP Insider, an O'Reilly author, and President of the North Houston.net user group. So I come to you today live from Texas. Uh, if you want to connect with me online, I'd love to extend the conversation. If you have questions after what we look at today, you can find me at Todd Anglin on Twitter. And you can always email me as well, anglin at telerik.com. Happy to direct you to the right resources. Today's session will go a little like this. First, I'm going to provide, for those of you who are not familiar, an introduction to Telerik. What is it that Telerik does? And for those of you who may be familiar with Telerik, what is the full scope of what Telerik does? And we do quite a bit these days, so it's important to keep up. Uh, then we'll talk a bit about building modern mobile experiences. What does that mean? What are the options that are out there? And how do you make the right choices? And then we'll spend some time looking at a new product from Telerik called Kendo UI, a product which uh, I had the pleasure of working with and working for. And we'll look at what that does to help you build those modern mobile experiences. And then at the end, I'll provide some follow-up resources, as well as letting you know about a competition or a contest, rather, that we're running right now for Tech at India, where you'll have the chance to actually uh, win some cool prizes. So we'll follow up with that at the end. Of course, if you have questions, make sure that you're logging those, and we'll do our best to follow up with questions after the event. Uh, but otherwise, let's jump right into it. Telerik was founded in 2002, around the introduction of .NET itself. And now we've grown to be uh, a worldwide company with offices in more than seven countries and more than 400 employees worldwide. Uh, I come from, of course, from Texas here in, in Houston, but we have our U.S. headquarters in Boston and, of course, our corporate headquarters in Sofia, Bulgaria, but a worldwide team working on building some incredible tools for a broad range of software problems. Along the way, we've racked up a few interesting awards and things that uh, recognize some of the work we've done. We're a Microsoft managed partner, sort of the gold certified partner, for those of you familiar with the partner program. So we work very closely with Microsoft and all the tools that we build. We also have a number of Microsoft Most Valuable Professionals, MVPs, and RDs on staff, people very involved in the community around the .NET developer, as well as a number of industry awards like the Red Herring Global 100, Best of Tech Ed Awards, uh, people that recognize the tools that we're building are really high quality and really designed and do what they're designed to do. What we do try to do, to put it kind of in a nutshell, is we try to help you build software so that when you have these different layers, user interface, domain logic, time spent building data access, and in any mature project, hopefully a degree of testing as well, we want to help you focus on that part of the application that really is unique to your scenario. And most often, that is the, thing, that is the code that lives in the domain logic layer. So we want to maximize the time you spend on unique business domain code and minimize that time you have to spend on the other layers surrounding that. For each layer, though, we provide tools that help you save time and help you build higher quality software, even for that domain logic code in the middle. And we do that by being an end-to-end -end provider. We have solutions for all aspects of software development, from the planning phase to the actual construction of the software to ultimately the testing to make sure what you planned and then built is actually what you produced at the end of the day. So no matter where in the software development cycle you exist and what you're trying to do, Telerik has tools that help you build that software more productively. In fact, we like to say we help you plan, build, and test your software. For planning, we provide an agile project management tool called Team Pulse, a very neat tool that helps teams collaborate and adopt and use agile practices while building software. In the other end of the software development lifecycle, in the other bookend of construction, we have testing where we provide the very full featured Test Studio from Telerik, which helps you create functional tests for Silverlight, WPF, and web applications, including HTML5 and AJAX and all the rest. And then in between these two bookends, we of course have our tools for software construction. And the Telerik Ultimate Collection is obviously the easiest place to get your hands on all of these tools. But this includes UI tools, tools for data access, tools to make you more productive as you write code, quite a few things. 
In fact, it's worth a little bit of a deeper look. Inside the Telerik Ultimate Collection, you'll find a number of UI suites spanning most of the major Microsoft platforms, ASP.NET AJAX and ASP.NET MVC for Microsoft's web platform, WPF and Silverlight for Microsoft's XAML platform, as well as Windows Phone 7 native tools, also XAML-based, and, of course, the RAD controls for WinForms for WinForms applications. Under the other category of dev tools, we have Open Access ORM for your data access needs inside of .NET applications, Telic Reporting for all of your reporting needs that now can plug into many of these different UI layers, and the latest release of Telic Reporting has a very neat and compelling end-user uh, report designer. We also have the Just products, Just Code, Just Mock, and Just Trace, and I like to call this the sort of 360 of development. Just Code helps you be productive writing your code, Just Mock helps you be productive testing your code, and Just Trace helps you be productive optimizing your code. So these three things together help you build, test, and optimize code when you're working inside of Visual Studio. And then Just Decompile, and if you've not seen this before, I encourage you to look at it today. Just Decompile is a free .NET decompiler and assembly browser, which is an essential tool to have in your toolbox if you're doing any kind of .NET development. So if you don't have that yet, it's free now, free for everyone, free forever. Just Decompile, check it out, download it. Great tool to add to your .NET toolbox. And of course, on the QA side, even within the Telerik Ultimate Collection, we do provide a edition of Test Studio, specifically designed for developers working inside of Visual Studio. So this is separate from the version that is designed for the QA, which is standalone and does not require Visual Studio. We do have a version that gives you the same productivity, so if you have to do all the things at once, you have a tool there to help you. And specific to today's talk, we also have Kendo UI. Kendo UI is an HTML5 and JavaScript tool set based on jQuery that helps you build a number of things, but we're going to look more at Kendo UI in just a minute, so we'll talk about that in just a few seconds. Before we get there, though, let's talk briefly about what does it mean to build modern mobile experiences? Because what we can look at today and find is that a lot of new development, a lot of new programs, a lot of new software is being built for devices, and there are a lot of devices out there. In fact, if we were to survey the entire landscape, there are a number of different platforms, a number of different web browsers and web engines spanning Windows Phone to the iOS platforms, Android, and even things like the BlackBerry OS. And building modern mobile experiences is not exactly a black and white answer. There are many things that you have to consider when it comes to building experiences for this range of devices. And if we were to boil it down into kind of its simple pieces, we could say that you can build mobile apps and mobile sites. And these are both distinct experiences you can build for devices. Mobile apps are things that are designed to look and feel native on the device. They adhere to the device's uh, UI metaphors, they position common UI elements in ways that are consistent with the native OS, and they install inside of the device. They don't have extra chrome around them, they look like an app, they fill the screen. We all know what a mobile app looks like. A mobile site, on the other hand, can be similarly functional, but rather than being an app that adheres to the device, it's something that's usually deployed through the mobile device's browser, and it's usually an adaptation of a fuller version of a website. So it adapts its layout to be uh, more usable in a small screen, but it's not really an app experience. So if we were to go about building mobile apps, we can do it in one of two ways. We can build so-called native apps, which use a device's SDK and its native UI elements, or we can build HTML apps. And if we're building mobile sites, we can build custom mobile sites, which is a mobile site completely designed from the ground up only for mobile devices, or we can build responsive sites, which is a website which looks like a traditional website in a desktop browser and automatically responds to different devices as they connect to the site and present adaptive layouts depending on that device's capabilities and form factor. Now when we talk about building mobile apps, it's also worth noting that when we build a native app or an HTML app, we're really just talking about different types of technology to achieve a very similar result. Each have their pros and cons, but in many scenarios you can achieve with an HTML app most of what you can achieve with a native app on a device. The advantage, of course, with HTML is if we write with an HTML app, we can write once, and with some modifications, very quickly deploy to all of those devices we saw on the previous screen. With a native app, we do have to learn multiple technology stacks. We need to learn Objective-C and 
uh, custom markup for Apple devices. We need to learn Java and different markup for Android devices. Of course, Silverlight.net and XAML for Windows Phone devices. So we end up having to maintain multiple developer skill sets. HTML can help us build apps that don't require us to do that. So translating these two categories and the approaches we can take within these categories to what Telerik provides to help you, under the app category, Telerik provides the RAD controls for Windows Phone 7 to help you build native apps for Windows Phone. Telerik builds on its long history of working with XAML platform to deliver some very high performance, very rich tools for building really some of the best apps you can build for the Windows Phone platform. Uh, if you've not checked out those tools, I highly encourage you to do that because it really is one of the most complete and most powerful and performance set of tools you can find for Windows Phone 7. On the HTML side of building apps, we provide Kendo UI, and specifically Kendo UI Mobile, which we'll be looking at in more detail here in just a minute. And on the other side of the equation, custom sites and responsive sites, we provide Sitefinity. And Sitefinity 5.0 has some very cool new features. It's a very recent release of Sitefinity, which specifically help you address both of these scenarios. Sitefinity can help you design responsive design layouts, which will automatically adapt based on the capabilities of browsers visiting your site. And it can also help you build custom mobile versions of your site that Sitefinity can serve directly to a mobile device. So Sitefinity 5.0 can help us with our custom sites and responsive site design. And the RAD controls for Windows Phone 7 and Kendo UI can help us build apps, either native or HTML, for various devices. Well, being that, of course, I'm the Vice President of HTML5 Web and Mobile Tools, and that Kendo UI is the product we work on, I want to talk to you a little bit more today about Kendo UI specifically and how it does help you build these mobile experiences, these mobile apps, using HTML and JavaScript so that you can quickly deploy and reach a large number of devices. Uh, to get there, though, let me give you a little introduction more broadly to what Kendo UI is and how we kind of envision the entire product that we're talking about here. Kendo UI is everything you need to build sites and mobile apps with HTML5 and JavaScript. And what we're trying to do is solve a very common problem that exists when you start adopting more heavily HTML and JavaScript to build rich experiences for both the desktop and for mobile devices. So why would you want to use Kendo UI? Well, here's the scenario you might be familiar with today. If you sit down to build an HTML and JavaScript experience, you might find yourself needing to assemble a number of different libraries to actually form the foundation on which you can start doing your development. So we might be finding things like Backbone for some of our data binding, things like Mustache for templating. So a lot of very good open source and large and small projects that can help us do all of this. And each of them has their own version number associated with them, their own uh, various qualities of the project, people working on it, size, uh, engagement, and the rest. Challenge, of course, of building a foundation out of a number of libraries like this with a number of versions is that it's ununified. The work is on you to support the framework. So rather than a framework supporting you, you are building and then supporting the framework. So it's an ununified approach. And what that can tend to create are the next two conditions, unpredictable roadmaps and unsupported code. So if you have the time to build, assemble, work on, maintain, glue together, and integrate these libraries, then it's an acceptable path. But if your goal is to very quickly get to actual building of your project, your software, on top of a solid foundation that's easy to version, easy to work with, then it can be a little bit harder to go down this road. If you're building professional projects, what do you need? You need less risk, less wasted time, so you can focus more of your effort, more of your time on the actual value of creating your project. So what we want to do with Kendo UI then is allow you to transition from this scenario to this. One library with everything you need in a very high performance implementation, so you're not sacrificing convenience for performance. You're getting both convenience and performance in a simple to use, simple to migrate library. And of course, because it comes from Telerik, it's with support, industry leading support at that. And we have a very aggressive roadmap and a very predictable release schedule. Three major releases every year, three in 2012. We'll talk about one of those releases in the course of today's talk. And we first introduced, first released the initial version of Kendo UI at the very end of last year, so Q4 of 2011. We've got some major enhancements already happening here in 2012, and I'm excited to share a few of those, few of those with you today. So the benefits, of course, of Kendo UI then, it's unified, improves your productivity. You don't waste time assembling a framework. It's built for speed, which gives your results that you produce a much faster runtime, especially on mobile devices. That high-speed JavaScript really works to your benefit. 
it's familiar. It's based on jQuery. So if you know jQuery, it's already a easy, low learning curve experience. So there's a short payback period. You're going to get value out of these tools very quickly. And then to help you along the road, as your application evolves, it's got an aggressive roadmap, so it's safe for your long-term investment. It's going to evolve with your project, and of course, it's supported. If you have trouble, we're here to help. Kendo UI is composed of three primary pieces. Kendo UI Web, Kendo UI DataViz, and Kendo UI Mobile. And each of these brings an important piece of the HTML and JavaScript pie to the table, uh, depending on the kind of applications you're trying to build. Kendo UI Web is the traditional UI widgets that you might be using to build the keyboard and mouse oriented experiences, the things targeted at the desktop browser. Like all of Kendo UI, it's built with the latest and greatest of HTML5, CSS3, and built on a foundation of jQuery, uh, but it's not limited to only the HTML5 and CSS3 browsers. Kendo UI Web adopts or adapts all the way back to IE7. So if it's IE7 or greater, then Kendo UI Web will work there, and you can use all the rich widgets like grids and tree views, rich text editors, one of the new things in an upcoming release I'll talk about, uh, as well as Kendo UI core elements, core framework pieces. And this includes things like a data source, uh, MVVM binding, which we'll talk about as well, uh, templating, drag and drop, globalization, so if you localize your UI, as well as validation that works across browsers. So it's a very complete piece of a very complete set of JavaScript, both UI widgets and core framework pieces you need to build a lot of your JavaScript driven software. Kendo UI DataViz, meanwhile, brings HTML5 data visualization to the table. And what that means is that you can achieve very rich data viz with animations and very complex chart types. We have a few of them sort of represented here. And they work without a plugin, so no flash, no silverlight required in this case. And they work across devices. So we can load this up in our browsers through our implementation. It works both in new modern browsers as well as older versions of IE. And then if you open it up in an iPad or an iPhone or whatever else it may be, the data viz works there too. So this is giving you very rich data viz that's interactive, that's a very, very rich presentation that runs everywhere. And that's a huge advantage. And finally, the piece we're really going to zoom in on today is Kendo UI Mobile. Kendo UI Mobile is designed to give you HTML and JavaScript widgets that look native on the device where they're running. So while there are, of course, other options out there for building mobile apps with HTML and JavaScript, we want to provide a library that makes it very easy to build your app with HTML and JavaScript, but have it look very much on par with a, again, so-called native experience. So if you were to wrap a Kendo UI mobile app with something like PhoneGap, a tool that helps you wrap up HTML and JavaScript and deploy it through an app store onto a device, it would be very hard for your users to distinguish a Kendo UI HTML JavaScript native app from a native app created with a device's SDK and native UI elements. And the neat thing about Kendo UI Mobile is that it will automatically adapt certain UI widgets depending on the platform where it's running. So as an example here, where we have a nav bar on the bottom, or a tab strip on the bottom of our iOS app, when that same tab strip is run on an Android device, you can see that it moves positions from the bottom to the top, and we change some of the styling to natively match an Android device's uh, UI guidelines, UI metaphors. So we do this for you to reduce that time that you have to spend making your app look right on different devices. Now, we don't subscribe to or endorse the philosophy of write once, run everywhere. But what we are doing is helping you write once and get to other platforms much faster, reducing that tweaking time so you can very quickly get write once, share everywhere, and tweak it to what you need. And of course, at the end of all of this, uh, a very just kind of interesting point to mention is that with something like Telerik Test Studio, whether you're building a native app using Silverlight and WPF on Windows or an HTML5 app using something like Kendo UI Web, you have a very powerful and very easy to use solution to actually go through, build tests around that, and make sure all the work you've done behaves the way you expect it to. So once again, that full story of build your app with some of these tools we've talked about here, and then use Telerik Test Studio to make sure it works the way you want it to. What I'd like to do now is just run through a demo showing you how you can use Kendo UI Mobile to build a complete mobile uh, app experience. So let's jump over to Visual Studio and actually look at some code. So what I've got here is an instance of uh, Visual Studio 2010, and I'm just going to start by creating a new project. I'm going to go File, New Project, and we're just going to create a standard ASP.NET MVC3 web application, but for the purposes of today's project, we're really just going to work with some HTML. So I'll call this TechEd India, because that's where we are today. 
click OK. And we're just going to go over to the empty project and we'll just leave all the defaults here set and click OK. And this is going to create my solution and the standard default items. But again, Kendo UI is entirely JavaScript and HTML. So really, we don't need to use a lot of the pieces that uh, MVC is providing today, though certainly we could integrate very fully into something like ASP.NET MVC, ASP.NET AJAX, or really any server-side platform to generate and spit out our UI. But for today's simple purpose of looking at Kendo UI Mobile, I'm just going to come to my project, do Add New Item, and let's just add a standard HTML page. So I'll type HTML and select this, and we'll just call this app.html, and click Add. So now I have a standard vanilla starting point for my project. And one of the first things we're going to do is fix up this ugly doc type that we got here by default. We really don't need all of that. We're going HTML5, so we can just do doc type HTML. And because we're still talking HTML5, we don't need this boilerplate either. So now we're down to our real clean starting point. Let's go give our app a name. I'll just call this my app. That's sort of a good starting point. And then we just need to add some code. Now, since JavaScript and HTML can be pulled out of the web, I'm going to go ahead and configure Kendo UI using just some simple CDN references. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a snippet here that's going to bring in my Kendo UI style sheets. So I'll paste this here. And what this has done is just added a few references to my Kendo UI style sheets, one for all my common elements, and then one for my theme, my theme-specific file. And because I'm using mobile and data today, I brought in some style sheets for that as well. The only other thing we need to do to configure this project to use Kendo UI is add our script references. So to the bottom of my page, I'm going to add a reference to jQuery and one reference to my minified Kendo JavaScript file. Those lines of code, that two steps, is all I need to do to so-called install Kendo UI inside of my project. I'm now ready to work with Kendo UI and start building my Kendo UI app. It's really just that easy. No other installs required, no magic behind the scenes. So what's the first thing we do to then start building our Kendo UI mobile app? We need some HTML. So I'm going to bring in one more snippet here, which is just some very simple HTML. I'll explain it to you here briefly. You can see on my screen that I have a div data role equals view with an ID of home. And inside of that, I have another div data role equals header. Inside of that, I have a div data role equals nav bar. And then below that, I have a div data role equals footer. Each of these divs with these data roles on them tell Kendo UI Mobile what that HTML should be transformed into by JavaScript. So without needing to do a lot of code or a custom configuration, we're very semantically, with meaning, telling our HTML what it should become in the context of our mobile app. Now, if we were to run this page now without doing anything else, let's just go ahead and view this in a browser. I'll right click View in Browser. Uh, we'll be looking at this inside of Chrome today because Kendo UI Mobile, which is designed today to work with iOS, Android, and BlackBerry, currently requires a WebKit-based browser. The features of IE10 will support much of what Kendo UI Mobile has to offer, but for today's release, we're talking about WebKit-based browsers, so we need to test this in a WebKit, so we'll be looking at this stuff inside of Chrome. So we've run this, and we can see that right now, this is just plain the same HTML we would have expected to be without much change. My app, hello mobile world, but not much else happening inside of this page. How do we bring this page to life and really make it feel like a mobile app? We really just need one line of JavaScript. So I'm going to come back over to my application page. And down here, after I've loaded my jQuery and my Kendo UI scripts, I'm going to go ahead and add one line of JavaScript inside of a script block. So I'll come paste this snippet in. And you can see that all I'm doing is inside of a jQuery function, which is designed to execute when the page is ready to run. I say new kendo.mobile.application. By default, this will initialize my page and turn it into a Kendo UI mobile-powered app. So let's save this and then reload our page in the browser. And just like that, this is starting to look a lot more like an app. Now, of course, at its current size, it's filling up my browser window. So why don't we just make this look a little bit more mobile by narrowing the width of my window. I'm going to do this and drag it here so we can see it more easily. So I'm narrow this down. And now this kind of looks and feels a little bit more like a mobile app. And we can see we've got my header bar. This obviously looks a bit like an iOS app today. So we might deploy to an iPhone. And we see, hello, mobile world. All that done with my simple HTML, where we had our data roles defined, as you can see here, and then my one call to my JavaScript file. Now, a lot of apps have some kind of navigation that allow me to navigate around the app. So how do I add that to this current experience? Let me come back here, and inside of my data role footer, 
I'm going to go ahead and add a Kendo UI mobile tab strip. I'm just going to paste in a little bit more HTML. And I'm going to run this HTML first, and then I'll explain what we've just copied in. Let's go back over to our app, refresh. And now you can see that same app we just had a second ago has a tab strip across the bottom with two icons, home and search. So how do we add this and how do we make it look so much like a native device without any effort? Well, you can see what we brought in was one more div with data role equals tab strip. Once again, that tells Kendo UI Mobile how to transform this HTML. And in that, we added two links, href to hash home and href to hash search. And then inside of those links, we had data-icon, home, and search. Data-icon is something that Kendo UI Mobile provides to allow us to very easily add from a number of pre-provided icons, those icons to our app. And then you can see the text simply shows up below the icon. So all that's being handled for me automatically by Kendo UI Mobile. I simply specify something, and it works. In fact, I could change this to data-icon info. Save this. Now you saw I created this project from scratch. We've not imported any files. You've seen everything from file new project. And if we go back to the browser and refresh this, you can see that now my icons change to this little info eye icon. So very easy and it's giving you a lot of that stuff you need right out of the box. Again, everything you need. So now that I've added a button that theoretically should take me to some view called search, I need to add another view to my page. So let's do that. So I'm going to come in here and just copy this first view and below that paste it. I'm going to go ahead and change this to ID search and then I'm going to go ahead and call this my search view just so we can tell we've changed views for now. So I'll save this and let's go ahead and reload our application. We'll reload it here and now when I click on my search button you can see that the views content has in fact changed to search view. So now we can see search view here and if I click on home we see the original content again hello mobile world. So I'll do that again and switch back you can see the navigation between views is working. Now, how is that happening? I didn't do anything. I didn't wire anything up. Kendo UI Mobile, when we create this application shell, is automatically locating our additional views based on the ID. So because we have this hash search in our navigation, it's automatically looking for another view with the search ID and then handling all that navigation for us. In fact, at the same time, Kendo UI Mobile is also handling our history state. So I could go to my search view and click the back button and you can see the back button is still working. In fact, if I do all of the back buttons, it's taking us back through our history as we navigated through the app. So Kendo UI Mobile is not only handling those transitions for us between views, it's also handling the user's number one favorite feature in a browser, uh, the back button. It's fixing that for us. So while that's cool and that's easy, uh, certainly it's not very hard. We have a, an app now that looks native with some navigation between two views. Uh, this really is not very dry. We're repeating ourselves here. We're copying and pasting our same header and our same footer across our views, and that can be kind of hard to maintain. Well, the cool thing about Kendo UI Mobile is it also provides something that's kind of like a master page, so to speak, for mobile apps, and that's in the form of layouts. So if I refactor the HTML that we have here, I'm going to come in and just kind of replace this with some additional HTML that I drew up before, which is really just a quick refactoring. What we've done now is rather than copy and paste our view each time we have a new view we want to navigate to, we've created another div and instead of data role view, we've created data role layout. And inside of this we have our same header with our same data role nav bar and we have our same footer with our same navigation tab strip. You can see to our home and our search uh, destinations. But now in each of our views, rather than replicating all of this boilerplate for each view, we simply specify uh, the content that should show up inside of that view. So how do these views know how to use this layout? Well, we just need to do one thing to our line of JavaScript initialization. Inside of our constructor for our new Kendo mobile application, I'm going to add just a few config options. I'm going to say now when we initialize, all of my views by default should use a layout with the ID default. Where is that specified? If we look at our layout that we've defined, you can see I've specified data-id default. That's what we're going to use to tell our views to use this layout. While I'm at it, I've also specified a default transition for my views. And when this is specified, Kendo UI Mobile will automatically add transitions between views as we navigate, and will automatically handle reversing those transitions as we navigate back through an application. So let me show you what I mean, because it's pretty cool. Let's look at this refactored state of our application. 
We'll reload this in my browser. So, so far, so good. We can see it looks kind of like we left it before we did our refactoring. But now let's watch what happens when I click on search. Do you see that content slide across? And if I click on the back button, do you see it slide back the other way? Kendo UI Mobile has automatically handled using our layout to provide the right shell for each of our views, our search view and our home view, and it's automatically handling the correct transitions to and from each of those views with a nice slide animation, which again looks very native for an iOS app. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice, uh, a nice native-like app. If I were to load this up on my iPhone now, then you would see something that looks almost indistinguishable from a traditional native app, which is something we've done in just a few minutes here, so pretty impressive. Well, I'd like to do something a little bit more here, but we should probably add a little bit more content. Uh, so what can we do to spice up our mobile app view, our home view? Uh, well, one thing I could do is add some data visualization. Kendo UI Data Viz provides a number of very interesting HTML5 driven charts, and I said these are things you could use on your devices as well. So why don't we drop in some charts to our mobile view? So I'm going to add some new HTML instead of just a hello world text. Drop this in here. And instead of just adding one chart, because that would be pretty simple to do, I'm going to show off two parts of Kendo UI in this step. I'm going to add a Kendo UI mobile scroll view, which gives me a way of flipping through a number of different cards that extend past the view of the screen. And I'm going to add three different charts, a Kendo UI line chart, a pie chart, and the brand new Kendo UI data viz gauges, which are part of our upcoming release, which again I'll give you a few more details about in just a minute. So with that simple HTML, not complex, that should make sense. You can see I've expected a new uh, class here, so I just need to add a little bit of CSS to uh, give each of my divs some standard styling. And we're just going to basically set the width, the height, and make them display inline block, just so they kind of sit next to each other. So now I just need to initialize my charts. And Kendo UI Data Viz has a very simple API for building out your different charts or gauges. And you can refer to the demos.kendouai.com to see how all that works. Uh, but rather than type it up for you here, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it into the application. Uh, and because I'm not binding to any remote data, I'm going to bring in all of this as local just JavaScript arrays as well. So I'm just going to paste this in and save this. And this has my initialization for instance my gauge, where we're finding it, setting the theme, setting some standard configuration options, as well as for my pie chart and my line chart. So not very complex, but you wouldn't want to watch me type that. So let's come back to our app, refresh it and see what we can get. Now we had one little problem here that we need to correct, and obviously that problem is not what it's supposed to do, so let's go ahead and fix that up. And more likely than not, it's because I just uh, added some extra code here when we copied and pasted in our snippet, so let's come check out our code and, oh, yeah, see, now I should have just used just code, because just code's installed in Visual Studio here, and it's showing me the connectors here in my JavaScript, so just code has full support for JavaScript, and it can show me where my uh, my connectors align, and I can see that I've added an extra closing connector here. So if I delete this and thank JustCode for helping me identify that, then I should be able to jump back over here, refresh this, and now we have our functional app. So the first thing we saw there, you can saw animate in. Now I don't know on today's uh, broadcast, because of the video and the bandwidth, the animations may not be coming through very clearly. Uh, so if they don't look clear to you, then I encourage you to go check out the demos afterwards, because that's where you can really see these animations come to life. But the first thing we see, of course, is a Kendo UI uh, data viz line chart. Actually, we have two series here, a line and a bar chart overlapped. And you can see if I click on these, if we're getting those little uh, point indicators that animate. And we see the scroll view. So as I swipe, we're swiping between our different data viz. So from the line chart to the pie chart, and we can see the tips coming up there. And then, of course, the brand new gauges. And, of course, we've just narrowed a browser window here, so we don't have the exact dimensions of our device. But... On a touch device, this swiping motion gives you a really nice way to just kind of imagine a dashboard app where I can just flick through and see these very rich data viz items all on my mobile device, rendering all built very quickly with Kendo UI Mobile and Kendo UI Data Viz. And of course, we still have the navigation in our app, so I can still click here, navigate to my search view, and then navigate back to my home view, and all of my beautiful data viz is there inside of my app. So, in a matter of just a few minutes, what have we done? We created a project from scratch. And using nothing but HTML and JavaScript, we've built an app that looks and feels native on a mobile device, in this case, iOS. Well, I said that Kendo UI is about adapting to different devices. So how could we adapt this to look right on an Android device? How could we just kind of force that here in our default example? Well, I could add one line of JavaScript to our application. So let me come in here, and after we've initialized our application, let me grab a reference to our body. 
And one of the ways we can kind of force and simulate being on an Android device is by removing one class from our project. And I'll do this with some jQuery. Remove class km-iOS for Kendo Mobile.iOS and add class km-android. And by doing this at the body level, I will automatically show you how Kendo UI transforms some of the UI widgets to look different if we're on an Android device. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and reload our application and see what happens. Look at that. Without me changing anything else to my application's code, our, nav our tab strip has moved from the bottom to the top of the screen, as we'd expect to be on an Android device. The styling has changed from what looked like iOS tab strips to more Android-like tab strips. So you can see now the search and the, uh, the home icon there, and even the icons have adapted to the different device. And even the slide, the scroll view, as I scroll view through this, you can see that rather than having little circle indicators, we now have these colored line indicators, more consistent with the Android platform. So very quickly, without changing any of our application code, we now have an app that looks right on Android and looks right on iOS. So we could deploy this with a little bit more tweaking out to the app stores. We would wrap it up in PhoneGap and in a matter of minutes have an app that looks native with skills we already have in the app stores for both iPhones and for Android devices. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm really excited to let you know that today, on the, this day here at TechEd India, later today, we will be officially releasing Kendo UI Q1 2012, our brand new release with all the new stuff like the new Kendo UI data viz gauges, which we just looked at, as well as the official release of Kendo UI Mobile, which we just took a little bit of a look at, and new things inside of Kendo UI Web, like our MVVM framework, the new editor tool for, uh, U, or rather, UI widget, the editor UI widget, rich text editor. Uh, and a lot of new things. So what you can do to find out all the new stuff is join us today. In just a few hours, we'll be hosting a big online keynote to show off all of Kendo UI Q1 2012 with lots of great prizes, including a Kendo UI mobile device pack, which will have an iPad 3, a Android device, I think a Samsung Galaxy, a BlackBerry Playbook, as well as an iPod Touch. So some cool prizes as well. You can register still and join us today by going to bit.ly slash kendo keynote and find all the information there about when and how to join and then sign up and join us in a few hours later today for the official Kendo UI Q1 2012 release. We're really excited and we hope you join us and we'll go through much more of what we just looked at in depth there today. In fact, we have a few extra minutes here together today before our session time is up. So let me use that time to show you a few additional demos, a few additional resources you can use for follow-up to learn more both about Kendo UI as well as some of the other things you can use for building mobile experiences like thread controls for Windows Phone. So I'm going to jump back over to our browser here. And what we see here in the browser now is demos.kendoui.com where you can find an overview of all the things that are in Kendo UI, both web, data viz, and also the new mobile, and of course a theme builder if you want to customize the look and feel of your Kendo UI widgets. What I want to show you in Kendo UI Web is, while we mentioned it very briefly when we were talking today, there's a full range of tools available in here for building the traditional keyboard and mouse driven input. Things like a powerful grid, which is all again JavaScript HTML, the configuration, the installation is just like we saw for Kendo UI Mobile, just a few style sheets and JavaScript references. And this gives you a very powerful interface for, of course, paging and sorting and even grouping, as you can see all this, all being done very lightning fast. All you have to do is get the data to it, which can be JSON, XML, whatever it may be, as well as the framework pieces like the Kendo UI data source. So when I talk about getting data to a grid, something like the data source is a very nice and convenient way to do that. Whether we're using local JavaScript arrays or binding to remote web services, we can very easily grab that data and bind it to one or multiple UI widgets on the page, and it handles a lot of those data operations for us. Uh, and some other cool new things coming in today's release, as I just mentioned, which uh, before the release you'll still be able to find at the beta endpoint. After our release, all of these will be updated, so it won't be on beta anymore. Uh, but here on the beta endpoint, you can see some of the new things, like the rich text editor that we'll be shipping in today's release for Kendo UI Web, which gives you a nice, easy-to-use rich text editor, which produces the same identical HTML output across all major browsers, which is actually pretty challenging to do, so we handle that for you. As well as giving you support for sort of basic formatting things, so I can select my text, I can modify and style it, I even have some simple color pickers for changing some color. All this, of course, giving me the HTML on the other end that I can save, persist, 
or do what I need to do with. So very simple to use, gives you a nice way to very add something a little bit more uh, rich than just a standard text box, and that's part of today's release for Kendo UI Web. And also in today's release is a new tool called the List View. And like the grid, the List View gives you a very powerful way for laying out widgets, but other than uh, or laying out content, but rather than restricting you to the traditional column and row format, a List View allows you to use the Kendo UI templates to completely control how your items are displayed. So whether that's something like this, where we're showing pictures and price all bound up here, or something more custom than even what we see here. So let's show you another example here, like remote data, where we're getting some tweets, and we've got a picture, and we've got uh, something else going on here, the tweet content to the right. Then we can come down here and see that the way we do this, of course, is by just creating our list view, simple HTML, and then initializing simple JavaScript with our templates. So very easy to use, another new part of Kendo UI Web today. And the framework piece is, while we also have data source, in the new stuff, we're adding MVVM. And if you've ever seen MVVM, many of you have, if you've worked with .NET for some time, this gives you a very convenient way, if you prefer this approach, for separating and maintaining some of that UI binding to your model state or to your data. And so it allows you to do, through simple data bind attributes in your HTML, the kinds of things like making sure all of your values are in sync between your model and your UI elements. So another cool thing to check out in today's release. We already showed you the gauges, and of course mobile's all new today, so we've looked at all that. So that's all coming today, and here you can come play with it, demos.kendoui.com. And finally, rag controls for Windows Phone. If you're building apps for Windows Phone, of course the best way to build apps for Windows Phone is native apps, and that's because there's such a great development experience and runtime that Microsoft's provided on that device. And if you're doing that, then the RAG controls for Windows Phone is a very complete toolbox, as you can see here, very mature, huge number of tools, all tailored specifically for Windows Phone development, all built from the ground up for the maximum performance that you can achieve. And if you jump over to the Telerik.com website and look at the RAG controls for Windows Phone, you'll not only be able to see each of these tools in action by watching a short video, which I won't play here because it won't uh, perform well in our playback, you can also go right now on your Windows Phone to the App Store and locate the Telerik app, which has all these demos you can just play with on your actual device. So check it out, play with it there. And find some apps built with the RAG controls for Windows Phone. There are a ton of them. And we have a showcase on Telerik.com where you can look at showcases of apps in the Windows Phone marketplace built with the RAG controls for Windows Phone. So this is not just conceptual toolbox. You can go see what other people have done with these tools and even get some inspiration for how you can use these tools to build your own apps. So there's some follow-up resources for you. You can go check out. So let's go ahead and wrap up for today. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming to this uh, Tech Ed India live session online. Hopefully some of what you looked at today is both taught you some ideas about how you should think about build building modern mobile experiences, tools that Telerik provides to help you build those experiences, like the RAG controls for Windows Phone, as well as Kendo UI, and of course, Sitefinity 5. And the experience doesn't stop here at the end of this recording. I encourage you to everyone here to go to bit.ly slash Telerik Tech Ed India, where you will find a link to a survey. And if you participate, you'll be in the drawing exclusively for your Tech, in Tech Ed India uh, participants, for an Xbox 360, a Nokia Lumia device, as well as a Microsoft ArcTouch mouse. So another great opportunity to win some prizes today. Simply go to Telerik Tech at India, participate in the survey, and you have an opportunity to win uh, one of those cool prizes as well. Otherwise, thank you very much for attending this session. Hopefully you found the content interesting, and we hope to talk to you more after this, as well as see you online at the Kendo UI launch later today. Thanks a lot.